Good evening and thank you for coming again. Um, last time we did this on Monday night, somebody played a mischievous trick on me, some evil soul. Sorry. <laughs> Asked if my trees were happy trees. I didn't have a clue what he was talking about. I assumed naturally, as anyone would, it was Prince Charles talking about his trees. <laughs> I have since been told by many people, including Laura and Steve Howe, who Bob Ross is. So now I know. To me, he was a completely unknown quantity. Um, and I never knew anything about him. But I looked online and I saw him talking about happy trees. So now I am, I am informed. But it did make me think of something very interesting. Um, we in the West tend to focus very much on hand-eye coordination. You study something, you reproduce it. And that hand-eye coordination is the core of drawing. But it isn't everywhere. Um, a lot of Chinese watercolors and drawing is based m on a much more choreographed movement, more like calligraphy than actually hand-eye coordination. And I was in um, an art store in San Francisco looking at some Chinese brushes, which I thought were very beautiful. And the guy who was selling them showed me how to use them. And he painted a bamboo, a bamboo trunk with, with leaves coming off it. And he did it with one movement, which he kind of bounced with the brush and then a couple of movements with the leaves. And it was totally in line with the principles of calligraphy. He wasn't looking at a piece of bamboo. He knew it looked like bamboo. He was painting the essence of bamboo, but it wasn't a portrait. And when I looked at um, Bob Ross, if I got the name right, that's what he was doing. He was doing calligraphy. It wasn't a portrait of a tree. It was a series of marks that he practiced that represented the tree. And I, I was intrigued in that because he obviously had got that particular happy tree nailed. Anyway, so much for happy trees. <laughs> um, I have done this much of the painting to show the light source. I'm cutting straight to the chase here. Okay, so this part of the painting shows the light source. And that's for me to show you, but it's also for me to confirm in my mind that the illumination is inside. But the problem with this is it looks too heavy. So I've started painting over here, um, lightening up the whole structure so it can look more transparent, more translucent I should say. It's going to be coloured but this is I'm painting out the dark areas but not in such a way you can't see through the paint into all the texture and colour underneath. So I'm keeping some of that by painting it in a very rough way and I'll come back to doing that in a second. Um, I kind of jumped across something else I was going to say first before I get started. People have asked um, a number of people have asked, is the painting for sale? And my answer is yes, that's what I do. Um, you know, I paint, we sell the paintings, we eat. It's simple mathematics. Um, I don't want to sell all my paintings. My ambition is to build a kind of gallery where both the architecture and the paintings can be seen. So that's my ambition. But to do that, we'll need to sell a few. So yeah, go online, go to my website, and you will be directed to the gallery. And you'll see the prints there as well. <laughs> I cut back to the painting now and start on it. Bear with me a second. Um, someone's asked, is there a fourth book coming out and will this painting be in it? Yes, there's a fourth book coming out and yes indeed, the painting will be in it. 
and we'll start. Well, we've been working on it, but we'll, we'll get working in earnest on it over the next few weeks. How do you get the marbling effect? In what marbling effect? In the basic shapes to start. These shapes? Mm, maybe the texture. Um, it's all painted in. It's... Yeah, I, I guess... I, I let the paint sit on the surface. When I roll of this canvas, I'm trying to hide the grid of the canvas. But I'm not... I need to have a texture left to paint on. So when I'm painting, let me show you. What did I do with this? Painting's a lot of fiddly stuff. Maybe I should, should I come in for this? Hang on. Let me go close. Okay, I'm using the brush very flat, so I'm just touching this, the high points and the texture of the underlying canvas. But I don't mind if I go over. I can go over the edge. I can go 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 anywhere I like. Actually, but if I can build up the density of the paint this way, get an edge on it. But what I'm doing here is letting the underlying texture, let the underlying paint show through. I was asked the other day about a mild stick, do I use one? And they are very useful. This one is, was a present and it comes in two parts. I've never bothered to take it apart, but you know, there's nothing to it. There's no reason why you would buy one. You could make it so easily. But it ha it's very, very important for stabilizing the hand, especially when you're working deep in the painting and you don't want to rest on the painting. Um, a few years ago, quite a few years ago, maybe Ten years ago, I had an accident in the garden. I was sawing a branch off a tree and I didn't realise the branch was held under a high level of tension. And um, as I cut through it, it snapped over my wrist and the saw blade Okay. The saw blade cut right through my upper bit. Cut right through there. Make sure I got that. <laughs> well, yes, there is a faint scar where it cut. And um, for me, it was very gruesome. I mean, it wasn't a serious injury, but it was deep enough to see the bone. And whereas people think I'm very squeamish about blood. I'm not really, but I'm very squeamish about my own. And I particularly don't like seeing parts of my body that are meant to be covered up. <laughs> so I was taken to hospital and the most painful part was washing it. So I, I was washing it under flowing water. But then the doctor came to sew it up and said pretty much dismissively, there's not much here, you just need four stitches. And she came with a needle and thread to make four stitches but her hand was shaking way too much and I said y you're not going to be able to do it your hand's shaking too much and she said well yes I can do it and I said well why don't you let me do it because my hand is not shaking yet but it will be if I watch you for much longer so and she said no 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 that, that we can't do that so I did explain to her that if I'm trying to do anything tricky I use a mild stick anyway the upshot of it was she was going to put four stitches in, 
she managed to slightly skew with and then gave up we both gave up and it didn't matter it healed up and hardly a scar <laughs> I'm very tempted to tell you uh, a sequel to that story I told my niece my niece Annabelle is is she still a medical student or is she qualified She's still a student, I think, just. Yes, but she's been um, recruited into the sort of effort for the, for the COVID-19 effort. Um, but she told me the story when she did her first time in the operating theatre. She had to make her first cut. And the surgeon in charge said, OK, there's a line, make a cut. And she said, I can't, my hand's shaking too much. So he put his hand out and said, rest your hand on mine, like a mild stick. But instead of putting her hand on his, she put her left hand on his and made the cut. And he very dryly said, I meant the other hand. But you know, whatever works. <laughs> the mild stick is very helpful. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to lighten up all the shadow areas, but I know where the light source is. And I'll probably do it a bit at a time. And then I'm going to, to give this a very pale wash of a sort of turquoisey green. So, step out of camera. Can I? So it, have a, has a, it will eventually look more like this. Can so, I ask a question yeah. while, while you're working? Yes. Um, what's the effect or the impression that you want people to have when they look at this picture, what's the feeling? I, the feeling I want to get is that it's a journey and it's, I mean, the feeling we got going over the desert in the evening, seeing the glow in the background. But, you know, somewhere a damn sight nicer than Las Vegas. Carry on. Okay. All the paints I've been using up to this point are opaque. And they're, although it looks like white, they're in fact all blues, different kinds of blues. And as I say, all opaque. So for the first time, I'm going to add a little... a little bit of transparent paint on there. Do you want to show us? Sorry? Do you want to show us the... Ah, or do you mean show you the tube? Show us what you're working with there. What colour have you got going on next? You'll see in a second. <laughs> it's, it's a mixture of um, uh, a blue and a green. Let me get the tubes and I'll show you. What, uh, lots of people want to know what brushes you use. Is it pro art? Yes. Yeah. Pro art brushes. I have a mixture, but the, the silver ones are pro art. Yeah. Okay, so manganese blue hue and phthalo green blue shade. Look at this bit. Yeah. So don't step on it. Do you ever use paint retarder? Maddie asks. I have some, yes. Um, not really, though. I don't use it much. I'm doing is I'm putting a very pale very watered down wash over this um, and the beauty of 
doing this in acrylic is I can adjust the color afterwards if I want it bluer or greener or any other shift in the spectrum I can add another wash to change it Jasper asks, have you ever been afraid of ruining a painting? <laughs> well, no, not really, because it's... Well, when I'm painting, it's hard to ruin, because if I make something wrong, you know, as I've done here, I've made, made the structure look too solid, I can just change it. And that's the beauty of painting as opposed to watercolours on a drawing which is hard to change not impossible but much harder do the record labels or bands ever ask you to edit um, for an edit I, I, I would say very 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 rarely and it's more often than not ended up in me not doing it rather than me changing it. But sometimes I've thought, hmm, okay, maybe they're right. I'll have a look at that. So it, it's happened, but it, it's very rare. It's not that other people can't see things I don't see. That certainly happens. Um, unfortunately, or otherwise, I am surrounded by people who have no hesitation to tell me when I've got it wrong. Not mentioning any names of anybody nearby. How do you choose the titles? How do I choose the titles? Mm. Well, the paintings often go through a series of titles. It's If the painting is in the studio, it's likely to get additional work done on it at some point or other if it's if it's there I'll look at it and I think ooh, I could have done that differently but I I have the same feeling about titles very often as a placeholder title the painting has the same title as the album but it, as in the case of Rilea I, I always thought Gates of Delirium was a much more poetic and powerful title for the album as well as the painting so I've taken to calling that painting Gates of Delirium. To be honest, that's what I think the album should be. But there you go. Andy asked, do the band ever give you an idea for what they want on their album covers? Well, for me, famously, um, there was one person who did, and I... I didn't expect to want to do it. Um, it was Ramesses. He was. Um, he told me he had an idea he'd like to talk to me about, and I liked his idea, and I did paint it. So it has again. It has happened, but not often. Um, sorry, I keep missing the names. Um, but someone asked if um, we could do a time lapse. We are doing a time lapse of this painting. So um, when it's finished, we will put the video up on the website and on YouTube so you can watch it alongside the live streams that are going up there after we record those as well. Yeah, um, it's there are problems with the, um, you know, this is our first time we've done a time lapse thing. So it may not work too smoothly, but we are, for what it's worth, doing it. One of the things that makes it a bit tricky is from time to time I do this with the painting. The noise is me undoing the G cut.
So Alan asks how often I've watched you work, to which I would say I feel like when you work it's after I've gone to bed. Is that fair, generally speaking? If I'm in the country <laughs> and here. You forget in the beginning because um, when I was, when you were born, I was still painting smaller pieces often on my desk and you sat on my desk and drew well I painted hmm. so you were there adding your two penneth <laughs> a very young age so what are we looking at here why is this upside down okay holding a mild stick and a pot of paint and a brush means humans artists in particular are endowed with only two hands when they really needed more so what I'm looking at here is to do moop paint in that arc. It would have been easier to raise up the painting, but just for speed I'm, I'm doing it down here. I want one of those cameras on the body harness so I can move around and it's all nice and smooth <laughs> and not clunking about. So someone buy this. This is Someone saying upside down the lighting effects inside the structure come to life. <laughs> Don. Well, th yes, that makes sense because the lighting is from below and it looks more natural when it's upside down. Also, maybe because the light in the room is coming from the left. Yeah, it could be. Maybe that's it too. Someone asked what my favorite of your work is. And I tend to like the sort of, um, I, obviously I love all of them. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Why change your habit of a lifetime? <laughs> They're all perfect, but <laughs> I particularly like the sort of watercolory ones, like um, like Relaya and the Asia Pyramid as well. Um, I have to think about it a bit more. What was the one that we had in our old house? The red one with the sort of snake that was disappearing. Oh, that was from Anderson Brew for Waitman High. Right, I like that one. And Freya's Castle, which for some reason dad flogged. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, that was the feature. That was a shame. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. On this, I've put the bl the blue green paint over the whole thing. On here, I've left a hint of the highlight, but I'm going to rework that anyway to get it back into place. Someone has asked: Is there a running narrative between your yes covers? Is there a story that? There's a running narrative between several of them, and there is an overarching story that was. A little bit of it was published in the tour book from last summer's tour. Okay. Um, Chengis, what? Sorry, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. Um, Chengis, 
wants to know what work you did in Turkey. Huh. Well, the Turkey projects, and it's plural, were all architectural projects, and they were all, um, well, I don't know, a little bit mad. Okay. I'm going to just take this out. Are we going to see some correcting? Sorry? Are we watching some correcting? Not so much, really. I just thought, well, you know. While I'm at it, I might as well start over rather than try and save it. I had no idea what Dad was working on in Turkey, but I had the most incredible trip ever because we went on a... I don't even know where we went. We went on a boat and at some point ended up in Istanbul and we went to the bazaar, the Grand Bazaar. Yeah. And they had a power outing. So everything was lit up with candles and for some reason, absolutely everything, all the market stalls sold was sparkly. Everything was crystals or glass or crystallized. <laughs> and it was absolutely amazing. I'm doing a little bit of chatty rambling because I've noticed that um, when dad does it, he tends to stop painting. So I'm just balancing things out a little bit. So, <laughs> so what's your job today? I mean, are you? Making sure you get your money's worth and repainting. <laughs> okay. I like that. That green makes it look like it's glowing, like phosphorescent. Yeah. Yeah. It works much better than the sort of very solid of that. Bob wants to know, um, he says, I would love to live in a Roger Dean house. How, how would one make that happen? Well... <laughs> we have a prototype that needs restoring and we I guess the answer is about eight years ago we found a site where we could build a number of houses and that gallery stroke museum but we you know we just didn't have enough money to buy it and it went so we're still looking and I'm hoping we'll find one uh, it might come after we built uh, a village for clients which which may be the way the best way to do it but I'm not I'm looking at every avenue at the moment okay so I've done all I want to do with the green just to try it out so I know where I'm going with that I know what works and what doesn't quite and what I'm doing now is going back to putting tone on the shadow areas. Will you ever re um, will you ever revisit the animal machine combos you were working on? Will I revisit it? Mm. Um keep painting. I did. <laughs> okay. All right. I have my orders. <laughs> I never know what to do because obviously everyone wants to see you paint. But also, lots of people have really good questions that I want to know the answer to as well. It's a difficult, it's a difficult call. <laughs> Knowing when to ask you and when well, to Well, go you. ahead and ask. Um, I looked at Shadow of the Beast and... Um, and it was animated, so that was an interesting thing. So that was only a couple of years ago, and I designed a wholly new one. I enjoyed doing them, so the chances are I will revisit. But it's it's like a lot of things I've done. A lot of other people are doing them now. <laughs> there seems less need to go back there. If I had my way and I did exactly what I wanted to do for the future, I'd be building. I'd be doing some painting and I would be building. 
because that's really, I want to build those buildings. This is um, a pause in the painting girl. This is some sketches I did for what might work on the left. And I picked up. Let me get the whole thing in. Okay. So this is a design I did for a small hotel. And I thought it would go with the sort of crystalline structures there. And I'll make something wholly new out of it. And this, just by the way, is a spa. But it's what I would like to do for the museum and the house or houses. So that's, that's one ambition. And there we go. Plans of the said structure. Keep going. Can ask questions. <laughs> I find the questions entertaining. Helps me concentrate on painting. I don't work in silence. Um, you know, so when I'm normally working, I'm listening to something. I'm not, I'm, I'm not necessarily answering back, but I, I am at least listening. Someone suggested that we split the days up, so um, a couple of days are just painting and a couple of days are questions. Hmm. We can think about that. Nah, I, I'd rather do the mix, but maybe we... I don't know. I thought we'd do quite a bit of painting. It's about the same as I would if I wasn't answering questions, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> Liam wants to know who your biggest buddy in yes is. <laughs> well, fortunately, I get on with yes very well. Um, he didn't really expect me to answer that. But cool, shall we move on? <laughs> <laughs> Before you alienate anyone. <laughs> oh, lots of people like the mix of painting and talking. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not a professional at, at this, and some of you write things that amuse me, but I won't necessarily say out loud. <laughs> Um, have you ever wanted to play in a band? Have I? Yeah. Um, not really, no. And I say I hesitated a little bit because um, when I was at, at school, I did, briefly. I played drums. And don't ask, I was rubbish. <laughs> um, will you draw an Aztec temple on this? Who is this provocative person? <laughs> <laughs> Alan asks me what it was like to be raised by a genius. <laughs> well, you can try and answer. Oh, <laughs> uh, <well>, Alan. <laughs> there you go. I can tell you what it was like. She never, ever... What was it like raising a genius? That's the question. Well, there you go. So that's what I'll answer. She never, ever let me advise her on art. If I would say, oh, let me just show... I get the most appalling scowl and a smack on the hand. Don't, don't, don't. So I, I was never allowed to tell her how to do it. She, in turn, never hesitated to correct me. Okay, if that was revenge. Keep painting and I'm <laughs> going to tell everyone how it was. So I would never ask Dad's opinion. What he would do is while I was working, he'd come up behind me really quietly and he'd look over my shoulder and he'd look at what I was working on and he'd frown and he'd just go, hmm. And I'd say, what? 
and he'd say nothing 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 <laughs> and I'd say no come on obviously I've done something wrong what is it and then he would you know tell me and uh, and that and that was dad's idea of teaching me how to paint so it did infuriate me yes <laughs> <laughs> well there you go I did have the experience though from when Freya was very young, very young indeed, sort of three, two or three, that she would paint on my paintings. And sometimes substantially. And sometimes that painting on the paintings is to this day still visible. The best bits. <laughs> yeah, the best bits. Okay, the form of this is going to disappear as I even out the colour and it won't come back until I go back into it again and bring it out again. But it's, it's a, this is a necessary process. Lots of people often ask about the cat. How did you feel about the cat walking across Yes songs? How did I feel about mm. it? Murderous. Mm. It's a cat, what can I do? <laughs> we had words. <laughs> and that was it. It wasn't a big deal, actually. It was not a big deal. The, the problem with that was, I was on the way, I discovered it early in the morning when I was on the way to the station to get it photographed. So I had a few minutes to try and hide those marks and failed. and. That evening, when I got back, after it had been photographed, I was able to paint them out. But it did mean, in the meantime, that they, the, the paw prints were on a pair of 10 by 8 transparencies and appeared in the posters, the album cover, the books, everything. So it kind of, it kind of got fixed. But the painting, the painting itself, didn't have the paw marks for them. So I'm just gonna. So lots of people want to. This this is one of mine. <laughs> lots of people saying they want to see one of mine. This is one of mine. This is one of mine. But if you want to see more of mine, <laughs> go to freydean.com or find me on Instagram. <laughs> people asked, okay. I believe. You. <laughs> I showed that one as it was. It's okay, we can though. answer questions because it's 36 minutes. I'm asking questions. Okay. I'm answering questions. People just want to see my stuff for a bit. <laughs> so <laughs> that's what we did. Well, was but it yeah. yesterday? You were asked which paintings we did together. Mm. I thought of three. I thought of um, the Skull and Crossbones for the Bonfire Society. Mm. You drew it and I inked it. The Osobisa one, I did the background, you did the foreground. What was the other one? Um, for the opera. The opera, we sort of, well, we, that wasn't t literally working on the same thing. Well, the first one Freya ever worked on in a substantial way was actually the painting done for the album um, when Yes formed with all the other guys. What was that called? Union, the Union mm. album, Guardians. Yeah, the blue in Guardians was all painted by Freya. Thank you all for saying nice things about my work. Thank you. <laughs> Have you turned the camera around? <laughs> I say nice things about your work too. Okay. Um, someone asked, is the light source the moon? And is it from the left? No, this stuff is illuminated from inside that's the light source of this there won't be a, a, an external light source it would be a dark night and the structures will all have a glow from artificial lighting Doug wants to know if I'm keeping up with my Japanese <laughs> yep <laughs> <laughs> sorry I'll stop asking answering my questions <laughs> 
Yeah, well, this is, um, you all know Freya is here. <laughs> can't, can't avoid that. <laughs> she gets up very early in the morning. Um, I don't know what time, but she wakes me about seven, seven o'clock because she does a class in Japanese at eight in the morning or 8.30. Mm, yeah. 8.30. Yeah, so she starts very early and then we have a gap in the middle while I get on with my painting and then we do this, which is brilliant fun. So Phil asked an interesting question. Maybe I could do the painting and you ask the questions. That would suit me, except <laughs> it means I'd have to get my head around the technology. <laughs> well, we'll keep it how it is for now and then I'll gradually okay. <laughs> overtake. Yeah, I guess Freya interceded, I don't know, it must be to some small degree or more in a maybe a quarter of all the paintings since you were born. I feel like we're talking about me too much. Alan wants to know, did you study other martial arts? Other martial arts? Mm. And maybe keep painting? Um, I, well, the answer is yes. When I was at school, I did judo. When I was at the Royal College, I did sabre fencing. And then, oh, what would it be? 35 years ago, I started doing kendo. And kendo was the most fascinating and most profoundly interesting of all of them. I'm getting told off for not working on the painting. Um, so a few people are asking what the plan for the bottom half is. Well, it's unusual that I've got a blank in a canvas at this stage. By now, I'd have roughed it all in. And I might do that between now and Friday, just to give an idea where it's going. But I need to get this nailed, and then the rest will come together. The traditional way of doing a painting is you do the background and you work forward in layers so that you're always painting on, t you're not painting something that is got to go all around what exists. And also you typically should start at the top left if you're right-handed and work this way so that you're not risking damaging the painting too often. Um, I would normally sketch out the painting but in this particular case, I thought if I've got that as a fixed position on the canvas, I can make the, the other bits respond and work to create a proper balance. What I look for is never symmetry, but I do look for balance. So balance, but not symmetry. That's my challenge. Two more minutes. Okay. Um, has the painting got a working title? David asks. Um, at the moment, in my mind, the working title is the, the Yes Live album, which is so generic, it doesn't really count. Um, but I am thinking of it, and I'm, I, I like the idea of something that carried the idea of Shangri-La or some kind of fabled city in the distance. So that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for something like that in the subject and in the title. Mm, nice. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you all on Friday and um, hopefully we'll see where this is going and where it's arrived by then. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Thank you everybody, see you on Friday.